James was very happy-go-lucky, very pleasant and very easy to get along with. James had lots and lots of friends. He was very, very popular, really popular. I don't even think he realised how popular and how much he's missed even today. And it's terribly tragic circumstances that we're talking here today. What do you remember of that time when James was reported missing? Well, the first thing we did as a family was decided to go and search for James. And we went up round Dundonald, up to the moat park at Dundonald, all round there, all round the areas where there were fields and where we thought he might have went. We thought maybe because he had climbed over the gate from the hospital that he had went out. There's a river there. We even walked along there, dreading in case maybe he'd fallen into the river or... Never ever for one moment did we think that James would be 40 metres from the hospital ward. We were told that the police had thoroughly searched those grounds, which is why we didn't search the hospital grounds again. We now find from the police ombudsman report that it was two policemen with a torch on the night that James went missing. And I feel if we'd have known that, we could have searched, we could have looked, Maybe there's something we could have done to help James. Do you blame anybody for what's happened? Now, 12 police officers have been disciplined. Do you blame them for not finding him in time? I'm angry with them for not listening to us as a family, for not realising how frustrated we were and how worried we were. It was very hard to make them understand James wouldn't stay away so long. The thing that makes me most angry is the phone that James had in his pocket was showing up to Donald Stormount to area. Why did they not look again? Why did they not search? When James was found, ten weeks later, the phone was in James's pocket. I am now left. My life sentence and nightmare is going to bed at night, closing my eyes, knowing James lay cold, alone, uncovered for 10 weeks. Why? A mother always knows, doesn't she? And did you feel at the time that James was there, he was waiting to be found? Not at the beginning, no. I thought James had got frightened and decided he wasn't going to stay there because it wasn't easy to leave James in there. My last memory of that night is hugging James, telling him I was very proud of him. And he said, Mum, I know I need help. I will stay here. I will stay. And I really think if James had planned on going, his money was there, his shoes were there, his clothes were there. I think James has went out for a cigarette, unaccompanied, which should never have happened had been given a sleeping pill, got spooked, climbed over the fence, maybe decided to wait until a bit later to go back in because he would have rang so many cousins, so many aunts and uncles, even friends, he would have rang somebody. But I will never ever know what happened to you. Never ever. It was too late. He was left too long. And that in itself is torture. But the fact that we were at the hospital, we were so near to where James lay, it's, it's horrendous. Yes, for our mother, I mean, that is horrendous. Is that, is, do you feel it's a life sentence you've been given now? Oh, yes, definitely. James was an only child. James was all I had. And James and I were very, very close. James still lived at home. I have to walk past his bedroom every day. I go out expecting to be there when I come in. I still stand waiting on James coming through the door because I never got the chance to see James again, to say my proper goodbye. It's surreal. It's like it happened to somebody else. Today has helped me in a way. I know James will never ever be back. 
but the only comfort and consolation is another missing person, another family won't come up against the obstacles and the frustration that we did and that small piece of comfort is that's helped another family in some way Yes, you obviously... And I you, hope and pray it does. You obviously say, believe then that lessons have been learned. Yes, yes. Well, I hope so. And I hope the new rules and the new regulations will be carried out and will be followed. The Police Ombudsman report seems to be very thorough. Are you satisfied that it is as thorough as it can, could be? Most definitely. That is comforting for me too. They were very conscientious in all the time they spent with the family and all that they have done. Very conscientious and it's very comforting to know people listened and people found answers for us that we couldn't find out and that we didn't know. We would never have known the mistakes that had been made. As a family, we knew, but we would never have known that they made so many mistakes and I wonder, would that ever have been brought to light? Would that have been swept under the carpet? Would anybody have ever known? It was only through your persistence as a family that... Yes, through the persistence of my family that this was done. At that time I wasn't in a position to think. I was devastated. The fact of losing your son is bad enough, but the fact that he lay for so long is horrific. Well, what's the future for you now that you appear to have got some sort of closure? Well, now all we can do is hope and pray that this helps us as a family and that maybe I will be able to close my eyes at night knowing that some good has come out of the tragedy that happened to James.